Denala is at a community health center in Malawi. He's 18 months old and badly malnourished. An all too common story in Africa. Without help, Skenala could die, and his father, Fayala, knows it. Sub-Saharan Africa has the highest rate of child mortality in the world. A new UNICEF report shows that almost half of all the deaths of children under five take place in Africa. And the tragedy is, most of them are preventable. Because, uh, you know, uh, I'm here to save the life of the children in Madagascar. But now, there's an unprecedented push to ensure more of Africa's children survive and flourish. Across the continent, African leaders are spearheading life-saving campaigns, providing not only vaccinations to prevent childhood disease and vitamin A to improve children's immunity, but, crucially, efforts to mobilize people at the community levels to give them vital information to help them understand nutrition and breastfeeding health, sanitation, and hygiene. Skenala is lucky. His father has brought him for treatment by trained health workers, which boosts his chances of surviving. The health workers show Fayala how to feed his son the ready-to-use therapeutic foods that can treat malnutrition. When I came to the clinic, I was well received. I was given the therapeutic food, and now I can see a change in my son. There is an improvement. But most children in Africa are not so lucky. Many grow up in harsh and unforgiving environments without even basic services like clean water. Poverty reduces their chances for survival and ravages their families' lives. What the families eat is often limited and nutritionally poor, affecting mothers' abilities to breastfeed and nurture their babies. Countries in sub-Saharan Africa bear the heaviest burden of the HIV-AIDS pandemic which hits children particularly hard. It's this combination of poverty, the impact of HIV and AIDS, often aggravated by other factors, such as drought and conflict, that makes living conditions here dramatically worse. But despite all this, visionary leadership and political will have made child survival a priority, even in some of the poorest countries in Africa. The success story of Malawi shows just what can be done to put children first in countries across the continent. The beauty of Malawi hides enormous challenges. Frequent food shortages exacerbated by high HIV AIDS infection rates. But Malawi is one of just a handful of African countries that have achieved a big drop in child mortality numbers. More than any other group, young children are vulnerable to the risks posed by contaminated water, poor sanitation and hygiene. Water and sanitation interventions are very, very important in reduction of child mortality. Water sanitation have got a very, very important role in the reduction in diarrhea. And recent scientific findings also reveal that acute respiratory infections can greatly be reduced through the simple act of hand washing. Don't just enter in this toilet and you stay here and you help yourself here. That is not a proper way of using the toilet. Children can also have a very, very big influence. Most of the children in primary schools, they go back to their homes in the evening. So if he or she has been using a toilet at school, she would probably put pressure on the parents to ensure that you know she continues also to use the same facility. 
This is the way we wash our hands. Wash our hands. Wash our hands. This is the way we wash our hands after coming to the toilet. I'm happy that these new latrines have been built. They are better than the old ones. It's much more hygienic. We can use water to wash the cement floors of these latrines. The old mud ones were difficult to keep clean. Malawi has a network of health surveillance assistants. The work they do is crucial in promoting basic health care in the community. I work here at Msulira. My work here is to keep the surrounding clean. I go each and every household to teach about sanitation. And to teach someone in a community is very difficult, but they are changing and they are improving. I know that I improve our country especially I improve our catchment area and I want to be the most so that they should know that Adam Surya, they have an HSA, he is doing a nice job, yeah. Each and every mother should go and see growth monitoring, how the, the child was weighing and I also encourage them to use exclusive beast feeding because beast feeding is very good to a child because a child can grow with good health. Yeah. Exclusive breastfeeding has many benefits for children, including when a mother is HIV positive. In each health center, there is a community support group which has been trained to help promote exclusive breastfeeding to the mothers. Drama has proved to be the most effective way of disseminating the information. Drama is there to entertain, at the same time to educate them on a specific topic that we want them to learn. The message to the women watching is that the breast is the safest way to nourish and care for their babies, and that for the first six months, any other food or water can be very dangerous. The story is about one woman who ignored this advice and went instead to a traditional healer. Conflict breaks out when opinions differ, but all ends well with a clearer understanding of the importance of breastfeeding. The real progress in cutting child deaths in Malawi is thanks in part to community-based centers like this one in Casiliro. Here, the children are eating fortified porridge, but countrywide, malnutrition remains a major concern. Uh, UNICEF has had a very important role in supporting the malnutrition units at national level. Uh, they provide the F75 and F100 milk-based feeds, which are the cornerstone of the nutritional care these children receive. This malnutrition unit is one of the busiest in southern Africa and we admit between one and a half and 1,800 children each year with malnutrition. If we can prevent uh, malnutrition, we will improve the survival in children generally. So campaigns to deal with malnutrition both at community level and also in treating malnutrition are important components of any child survival strategy. In Malawi, HIV has become a common problem, sadly. And this affects families, it affects communities, and it affects particularly children. The HIV infection causes nutritional difficulties for children. So many of the children now being admitted to malnutrition units are children with HIV infection. We are fortunate in Malawi that government has been extremely proactive in both providing nutritional support for children and adults with HIV and antiretroviral drugs are free for all within Malawi. And the programs are being scaled up and we have over 100,000 patients within Malawi now who have started on antiretrovirals and increasing numbers of children are becoming beneficiaries of this program. Before the RV is yours, on and off, on and off, on and off. Malaria, diarrhea, even shingles. 
she has some shingles. Then after she has studied ARVs, great improvement. Even the height, she's now glowing. She has changed a lot. She wasn't like this. Now she can wash plates. I can send her to the grocery. God is a great. Antiretrovirals, or ARVs, improved water and sanitation, breastfeeding campaigns, and community level involvement. Malawi has made huge strides in cutting child deaths through simple, affordable strategies like these, backed up by strong political commitment from the top. Another country where political will has been mobilized at the highest levels to help save children's lives is the West African country of Benin. In October 2007, a national integrated campaign was launched to send mosquito nets, vitamin A drops, deworming tablets, and health information to the very remotest parts of the country. <music> President Yayi Boni was there for the launch, wearing a health worker's orange armband to show his backing for the campaign. Local stars like singer Zainab also turned up in support. And in case anyone missed the point, the malaria-carrying mosquito made an appearance too. Come and join me in the fight against malaria, which is first and foremost a fight against misery. My dear countrymen, the best way to fight malaria is by prevention. Prevention through the use of long-lasting treated mosquito nets by the most vulnerable group who are children under the age of five and pregnant women. Malaria represents one of the principal causes of child mortality, particularly here in Benin. It also puts a strain on health resources, as well as representing an economic burden in terms of days of work lost and days of school missed. Over a million treated mosquito nets have been delivered to Benin. But that's only half the battle. Like many African countries, Benin has thousands of remote rural communities who live far from the nearest roads and the nearest health centers. In 2006, 40 million treated mosquito nets were distributed to communities across Africa by road, boat, foot and on bicycle. But handing out mosquito nets is not enough. Recipients have to know how to use them, why it's important to go on using them, and how to make sure that pregnant women and young children sleep under them every single night. The importance of this message is something which Lucien Ugnivu learned to her cost when she nearly lost her son to malaria. When my son was infected with a serious case of malaria, I had no idea what malaria was. My husband and I didn't know anything about malaria. 
and we went everywhere, tried everything. In the end, it was my mother-in-law who told us to go to the health center. The health officer told us clearly that malaria is caused by mosquito bites and that pregnant women must always sleep under a net. At the health center, they told us to take better care of the children and make sure that they sleep under the net as well. Now, my husband has insisted we all sleep under the net. But it's wars and conflict that most threaten the survival of millions of children in Africa. The Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC, is victim to the violence, poverty and disease that help fuel high child mortality. The DRC lies at the heart of the African continent. It's a nation ravaged by a conflict which has claimed more than two million lives, many of them children. One in eight children born here don't survive their first year of life. For the past 10 years, the eastern region of the DRC has been plagued by conflict and upheaval. Since 2006, the UN estimates that violence and civil war have forced over 350,000 people here to flee their homes. These are the conditions that make children most vulnerable to malnutrition, disease and abuse. We fled from Kimuka in November, but we are still struggling and I can't see where we are going. We don't have clothes. The children aren't happy anymore. Life is a struggle. The children need to eat. They need a good place to sleep. They are looking at each other, wondering which tent they will sleep in. They are confused and asking, Mother, when are we going back to our home? But even in the midst of this chaos, there are things that can help. Children's nutritional status must be assessed and improved. Infections here spread like wildfire. So emergency immunization against diseases like measles can save thousands of lives. It's important too that children living through traumas like this are observed and that they have a chance to play, heal and thrive. We know that these children have been traumatized and that they have a lot of problems, mental, for example, emotional, motivational, and we're looking for ways for the activities that we do with these children to help them and to unite them. We do as much as we possibly can to help them to forget everything that's happened to them and all the problems that they have experienced in their journey from their homes to here. Women in Africa often have very little say over their lives, even over what happens to their own bodies. Conflict magnifies their vulnerability. The conflict in the DRC is now attracting worldwide outrage because of the widespread indiscriminate rape of women and children, which has a severe impact on children's chances of survival. UNICEF, in partnership with the global movement V-Day, has launched a campaign to demand an end to the sexual violence against women and girls in the DRC. This campaign works on two levels, at international level, to sensitize uh, all the population, uh, from the Security Council to private citizens, uh, on what is still ongoing in DRC you know, about sexual violence. And at local level, the campaign aims uh, to shake <laughs> the local population. This is a historic day, an extraordinary moment 
Women coming from Goma and Bunya, all over the DRC, Rwanda and Belgium and France and Austria and America, launching this campaign for the great women of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Stop au voyol! Pouvoir aux femmes! This dance performance conveys the horror of the rape perpetrated on women and children in this region. But rape isn't confined to the conflict here in the DRC. It happens all over Africa, affecting women's ability to cope and to look after their children. Statistics show a direct correlation between violence against women and malnutrition rates among their children. The sexual violence has a catastrophic impact on the children, especially on under five children. And also after the rape, uh, very often a woman is rejected by her family, by her husband and she's not able to provide uh, the same care, the same uh, nutrition that she was able to provide before. The widespread violence and disruption here is having a major impact on child survival rates. But away from the front line, there's been real progress in reducing child deaths in Africa. Fifty years ago, 20 million children around the world died before their fifth birthday. Today, for the first time, thanks to concerted efforts by governments, donors, international agencies, civil society and ordinary people, that number's gone below 10 million. It is efforts like these that give children like Skenala a better chance of surviving, and his father the hope that he'll grow up to be a happy, healthy adult in a continent fit for all of Africa's children.